Okay. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, depending on which part of the world, which time zone you are joining us from. My name is Chaba Nikolini. I'm professor of political science at Concordia University and also director of the Azraeli Institute of Israel Studies uh, at Concordia University. It is such a pleasure to uh, greet and welcome each and every one of you, but certainly it is such a pleasure and privilege to welcome our speaker, Hila Abraham, who is joining us live and well from Yerushalayim. And those of you who know the city well, as we speak, Hila is sitting in her office at the Jerusalem Cinematheque, that beautiful, very important institution in the cultural life uh, of the city. Uh, this is a very important day, of course, in the Israeli and the Jewish calendar. Uh, today we are marking International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Uh, and not that there is an immediate direct connection between the day and what Hila is going to tell us about, but we are, of course, going to talk in we are going to be talking about memory. And memory, as we know, is a very important part, is a very important element of uh, Jewish and Israeli history and identity. So I'm really, very grateful that Hila was able to uh, commit and take time away from her schedule to spending the next hour, hour and a bit with us. This is also a very auspicious day because there are not that many days ever that Montreal and Jerusalem appear to be surprisingly similar under snow. As we speak, both Jerusalem and Montreal are experiencing perhaps not the same cold temperatures, but the same beautiful white fluff out there in the streets. And I see Hila is smiling, so I think I'm right. The snow that came down last night hasn't melted yet. And so with your permissions, ladies and gentlemen, let me now say a few words about who our distinguished speaker is. And then, of course, I will turn, if not the microphone, but certainly the screen over to her so that she would be able to tell us about this really monumental project that was completed very recently, marking the revolutionization of audiovisual memories of Israel. So our guest, Hila, has been the director of the Israel Film Archives Digitalization Project, Digital Preservation and Access Program, uh, which she has been uh, leading for the past seven years. In 2010, Hila completed her MA in Film Studies at Tel Aviv University, and then she spent four years in the United States working in film archives, film festivals, and film curating, where she also graduated from the L. Jeffrey Selznick School of Film Preservation in Rochester, New York in 2014. Hila is the recipient of the Sony Picture Scholarships from the International Association of Moving Image Archivists, and she is a very active advocacy member in the international arena of film archives. We are indeed so lucky and fortunate and privileged that we can welcome to our community, to our campus, even if virtually, Hila Abraham. Hila, the microphone and the screen is all yours. Hi guys, and uh, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm actually a little bit uh, excited, so uh, bear with me. <laughs> um, I will walk you through the Israel Film Archive uh, um, Institution in just a few words, so you will gain an understanding of who we are and what we do. Uh, afterwards, I will demonstrate you the fairly new website that we recently uh, launched and uh, I will be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I'm already telling you, if you have questions that I won't be able to uh, answer during the presentation, I already put my email address on the chat and really feel free to contact me in any um, subject matter that you have. I, I would gladly uh, be at your service. So the Israel Film Archive uh, is a part of the Jerusalem Cinematheque, but it's uh, um, an institution that has almost or fairly most of the Israel audiovisual um, historical records. What we have in our archive is a 35 millimeter and 16 millimeter. I don't know, maybe some of you had the chance to, uh, to uh, have one or see one uh, in, in your history, in your past. 
um, and we have uh, 10,000 of care film cans at our archive with film dating back to 1896, just one year after uh, cinema was invented. There was the Lumiere brothers who came to Israel and shot the first moving image documentation that was ever made in what was uh, then Palestine, Palestine. Um, and we have, and we are um, still accepting films to this date. What I mean by that, that we are an active archive. Also um, films that are born in digital format are being deposited at the archive. So we constantly grow all the time from the analog um, times to the digital. And uh, I will talk shortly about our digitization project, a very massive one to digitize all the analog collections in order to make them accessible to the public in Israel and abroad. What kind of films do we have at the archive? We have any kind of films that, that was ever made. Um, I'm talking about all newsreels. If you are familiar with uh, Israeli TV, it was kicking in fairly lately uh, relatively to um, TV in all over the world. So uh, newsreels were made until 70, 1972. So we have all the newsreels that were made in Israel from, from uh, 1927 to 1972. We have uh, feature films, documentary films, films that were made uh, um, um, uh, by students for filmmaking. Some of them are, you know, fairly uh, very uh, famous by now, but then it was their first um, trial in, in cinema world. Um, we have advertisements, uh, experimental films, industrial films, and uh, films that were made by uh, the government. The Israeli Film Service, I will show you later, is a very important uh, body of work in uh, film. Um, and we have it here at the archive and now also on the website. And we're talking about everything that you can imagine. Uh, if it's, uh, oh, and I forgot home movies, which is a very important body of work because um, um, in comparison to, you know, to the newsreels that were made mainly um, from a very specific point of view or more institu institutional point of view, home movies are records of history in moving images that are very personal, um, very familiar and similar to what we are um, um, thinking about when we think about our personal cameras and uh, on our mobile phones today. Um, so we have really everything that you can imagine, um, except of maybe TV, archives that they have a, a, a separate platform of their own. So seven years ago, we started to dream to digitize all this uh, really amazing uh, documentation of this place in moving images. And um, after a very um, long and comprehensive research that we made, uh, we talked with really a lot of uh, colleagues around the world. I see one here actually, uh, Benjamin, hi. <laughs> colleagues around the world and uh, other uh, archives around the world to really understand what is the best equipment and standards and workflows and how one builds a, a, a motion picture digitization uh, lab. So we built the lab inside the archive and now we are able to digitize 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter to really best quality. Um, but the major, um, I think mainly for, for you guys, for people from outside the archive, the, the main um, goal that we had and, and one of the challenges is how we are going to provide access to such large body of work, because we knew if we are just going to put a, a newsreel on the website, well, it, it may be interesting to a few people, but you know, maybe a very crazy, you know, people who really like history, etc. Um, but we uh, decided to have uh, a, a group of researchers. Um, that, that sat and watched through the films and still are doing it because we are not done yet, um, and log and tag every bit of item of any film. So you'll be able, 
you'll be able to search and find, um, you know, so many different topics and people, events, uh, and places, et cetera, that uh, are really going to, I, I, I hope, to help you uh, in your research and uh, other kinds of activities that are related to Israel history. So let me now demonstrate uh, the website. I will share my screen with you. Um, everybody can see my, uh, my screen? Are we seeing the website? Perfect, perfect, Hila. Great. Yeah. Okay, so the website is bilingual. It's both in Hebrew and in English. All the, all the content in, in the website is accessible in Hebrew and in English. And lately, we actually accomplished also uh, pro producing uh, English subtitles to most of the films, and we are in a, in a process to to um, to provide more subtitles uh, to more films that we are um, um, uh, at the uh, left corner in the bottom. I just want to um, uh, honor the donors and partners that are. Um, making this whole project um, um, available. We wouldn't be able to do all this magic without them. So uh, thanks to all the our donors and partners. And when we um, came to think about how the website is going to look like, how one is going to search and browse the website, we understood we have two kinds of materials in our archive or two kinds of uh, um, spectators. One is the person who wants to go to a VOD and uh, browse films to watch, you know, from beginning to end, like you do from Netflix and uh, other kind of uh, uh, platforms. Um, just browse our catalog and watch whatever film is uh, um, interesting to you. This is what we call the artistic view. I know it's not the best... Um, best uh, phrase or best uh, way to uh, uh, acknowledge this part of the website where we're uh, working on it. But uh, basically you can um, click on every kind of uh, um, square that you saw and you have a short synopsis, some very basic credits and um, some um, tags that are related to the film. In this section, we have um, we decided a very, I think, I think a very important and I would say courageous uh, decision um, not to curate any of the films, not, not to provide curation to the films. What I mean by that, that you can find experimental films just next to long, to feature length films, to documentary, to fiction films, to old ones. Um, and they're not in particular order, nor in particular hierarchy. For us, it was very important to open up the canon, the Israeli film canon, and provide um, you know, a decent platform to all the films to be uh, shown in, the, um, in this platform. Of course, you can browse topics, you can see we added a topic. Well, it's not just a, a it's not really a topic. It's more of a, uh, a section, but movies with subtitles. So you'll be able to know, you know, people who do not understand Hebrew will be able to very um, um, easily can browse films according to which one of them have already subtitles to English. As you can see, there are two kinds of films. There are films who have the button to order, which means they will cost you uh, 15 shekels. I don't know how much it's in uh, US dollars today. Um, appro appro approximately $4, I'm not sure. Um, which 70% goes to the uh, right holder and only 30% goes to the archive to compensate on, on the website uh, platform but um, our goal was really to compensate the right holders who um, cooperate with us and allow us to put the, their films on the website. This is, for instance, a film that is for free. You can see here it's written uh, free on the left. 
in the bottom, which means it's accessible, uh, you know, for free everywhere. Um, I would actually would like to, to show you first, I, I jump to the artistic view, but I, I would actually like to, to show you and really delve into the historical view, because I think that uh, in comparison to the Israeli film VOD, which is wonderful and allow you access to many films that you couldn't see any in any other place and weren't even digital, the historical view, yeah, I think is a really pioneered um, 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 step that we take in, uh, in the international arena. I don't know about any other archive or VOD platforms that allows such a a detailed search in our historical um, collections. What you see here, basically, it's the it's a map. Uh, it's the, uh, our way to um, uh, to search historical audiovisual documentation. On the left, you have the search engine, which I will demonstrate in a couple of seconds. On the, um, in the um, middle, you have a, an interactive map. Each um, dot on the map is basically show you that it, you have, we have some kind of moving image documentation in this very, in this very dot. As you would see, if I um, go into deeper Jerusalem, you would see we have a even, um, uh, we actually tagged even a very specific building in Jerusalem or in any other place if we knew the specific um, GIS location. So, and it's not just in Israel, if I'm going to zoom out, you would see that we also have um, clips from all over around the world. Of course, there are clips that are related to Israeli or Jewish um, content, but they took place in North America, in Europe, in Africa, in Cyprus, and, and, and uh, etc. cetera. Um, in the right um, column that you see here, we have, this is basically the result, the, the, what, um, <clears throat> all the moving images that you can browse and just watch. You can also just, you know, um, go, you can see how many we have and start watch each and every one of them. But let's uh, start by, I don't know, looking for, um, oh, sorry, peace. <laughs> a very, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, <laughs> a very, a very uh, challenging uh, um, concept for this area. Um, so you, as you saw, when I um, um, put down uh, the word, um, it already drilled down the dots that I received in the map. So we can look for peace uh, and for specific footage, for instance, in the north of Israel. And the right column was also filtered according to peace in the north map. You can also... Um, look for peace and uh, have a more developed uh, um, search with, you know, different persons. Some of them uh, are more familiar from like D David Ben-Gurion, but others are related topics. And of course, decades. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe we should watch one just for uh, maybe we should look for something more fun, <laughs> and you would find really everything. It's not just uh, international relations. It can be animals. It can be agriculture, water, snow, um, arts and cultures, technology. You, we really have everything here in our um, in our website. Um, let's uh, look for. Um, I don't know, something interesting. Um, Chadera and Zichron Yaakov from 1913. This is a silent, uh, going to be a silent one because of the um, uh, sound wasn't invented by then. 
But as you can see, it's a documentation from 1913 of places that look completely different today. It was shot, it was one of the films that were shot for, me, for the Zionist Congress. And it will really uh, talk more, speak more to researchers of the place or period, but we have uh, lots of other footage. From this footage, you can also save it and you have a personal, then if you uh, register, you have a personal um, page when you can save uh, films that interest you. Share, of course, rate it, it's for your own sake. Uh, it doesn't uh, reach us. A small paragraph about this segment and related topics. What is interesting about this, um, whoop, um, about this uh, platform that what you see here, it's not the whole film. It, we basically broke down the film to small segments so you would be able to watch instantly um, the related topics or persona that you are interested in. Um, let's watch for in, in a very uh, impo important moment, of course, in the... should uh, look at, uh, fi at uh, archival films with, I think, with, you know, with an, uh, um, uh, th there is a, a perspective from today that we can uh, saw the see these films and, and uh, you know, and things have changed so much that we can criticize them. And I think it's really important also always to keep in mind who um, documented, who was the documenta documenter behind the camera once it was uh, documented. Um, I would like to actually show you uh, a beautiful segment of film. Um, this is from the 1920s. Um, it's a film that is colored by hand. It's before there was color in cinema. As you can see, we received it from the, Jeg the former Yugoslavian film archive. We have a really beautiful international connections with archive around the world. And uh, this is a beautiful film that part of it was colored by hand, what remained of the color. Also a silent documentation. Uh, the old city of Jerusalem, if some of you are familiar with the roads. Um, and I also like up. This is really close to the Jerusalem Cinematheque, actually, if you ever will uh, come and... Uh, this is a uh, shoe shiners, basically, just outside the old city. And this is just one of the films that were here in the, uh, a film can and nobody knew about it until now it's accessible um, to the wide public. Um, as I said, we also have some uh, very interesting home movies um, and what is interesting about them, they really give a, um, a, a uh, private point of view of sometimes big events, but also uh, private events, events of everyday uh, time of a family together, etc. Uh, for instance, but we have the, um, a very interesting 
uh, record of the same event from two points of view, one of, uh, from a newsreel and one from a home movie collection. If you are familiar with the, um, I need to um, maybe up, maybe. Um, the Betsy on America, it's the, um, I forgot the name in uh, English, but I know where it's located. Uh, just a second. On Evan Gvirol. Uh, As you can see, when I move the map, everything is moved with it and we really try to tag each and every um, dot on the map. Okay. I think I mean the right, um, um, you know, yeah, the Zionist, uh, Zionist of America house, if you're familiar with the, with the if I'm uh, with the 50s, the launch of the Zionist, Yeah. Just a second, bear with me. Okay. Okay, sorry guys, I, I couldn't find it. Uh, maybe I'm looking for something uh, not uh, specific. Uh, but I want to show you another section, um, which is the collections, the archive compilations. Here we, here we try to give, a, um, you know, a platform to each and every collection as a collection that we have in the archive. It's in process, of course. So here you can find much more and uh, many more items that we may be uh, not were, were not able to tag um, until now. One of them is the Fred Monason collection, which actually Neve Monason, which is a village in Israel, is uh, called uh, um, after his name. Fred Monason was a Zionist and uh, a man who was very close to the Israeli government uh, during the 50s and 60s, and just went to a you know any anywhere with a private uh, film. A, a private camera and took beautiful shots of uh, different kind of um, events. Um, another, here you can find the newsreel collection as I saw you. This is the Israeli Film Service collection, which is here what we have is just the tip of the iceberg. Basically it's the body of uh, uh, Israeli um, government who sponsored film from the 50s until now, actually now in a very low um, pace, but uh, back, back in the days, it was a very um, active platform that uh, to make films and many famous Israeli filmmakers actually were uh, worked at the Israeli film service. And you will find here uh, films about uh, arts and culture and artists and technology and agriculture. Um, uh, how do you say it? Uh, um, uh, this is a beautiful film, by the way, if we're speaking about the International Remembrance Day to the uh, Shoah uh, due to that war with uh, Poliker, if you're familiar with the Israeli um, uh, songwriter. So really films about everything that one can, uh, can think of from the 50s until today really beautiful, um, as you can see, digitization quality. This is, for instance, a film about, uh, I don't know if you, if you had it. about communication and about the, the old telephone. 
כברק, תעבור מהשמורות מפקיד לפקידה. ואם אין לדברים פרחי ציפורן בדש, הנה יש ויש טלפון ציבורי חדש. ומה יתרונו של הרך הצעיר, ומה במחילה הבשורה הנועזת, גם שמחה מקומית, גם בין עיר לעיר, נוכל לשוחח מבלי שתחילה נוצרח לחייג למרכזת. וזה אסימון חדש, הוא קטן ובצדק, שנוח יהיה לסיתו בכיסים. Yeah, and it's going on, go on and on, and it really, I, I see some smiles uh, around the, the, the <clears throat> my computer, and I think it's both talk about nostalgia, but also really, I think it's a, just a, a, a sea of opportunities of research. Think about it, that we can now... Um, open up how we think about our history when we have moving images. Of course, we need to be critical about what we see. Of course, it was made from a specific point of view sometimes or, or always, but uh, it's really nothing like a, a text, right? And, and I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all in favor of, of text, of course, but it's completely different and different kind of uh, uh, familiarity when we see it in the moving images, and it speaks about all, about how, uh, how we connected in the past, how people were um, working in the past, how places were look like, um, what, what, what was the cultural agenda by uh, then, you know, what is inside the frame, what was kept out of the frames, uh, Jad Neeman, who is familiar with uh, the director who just recently actually passed away and, and really made uh, phenomenal films. Like many others, he also worked in the Israeli Film Service, and this is a film about the Bedouins in 1971. Whoever just uh, um, hearing a little bit of Israeli news what knows that Bedouins are now, uh, again, the Bedouin uh, question is uh, again in the, in the news and, and um, it's just a... Actually, see that this film, uh, although it has uh, English credits, uh, was wasn't subtitles. Usually, the subtitles in English are popping in uh, instantly, but I see here uh, it's not. Um, another collection uh, that I really like. Um, well, I, I like every collection. Oh, before I, I will go to the, this collection, we actually just recently launched this collection. It's actually uh, oh. Everything that you see on the website, um, its um, origin is here from the archive in terms of the film cans themselves are e here in the archive. For this specific collection, we were contacted by the Sherman Greenberg Film Library that actually located in Los Angeles. Um, they are the responsible ones for the Paramount and Pate uh, newsreels, the American Pate and Paramount newsreels from all around the world. And they uh, are re very, um, uh, they, they saw actually a website and they told us if we are, uh, would like to have a cooperation where the newsreels that are um, uh, related to Israel or Palestine uh, would be also presented in our website, which for us, of course, it's, uh, it's an amazing opportunity for cooperation. Uh, two folds. One is because we also um, um, translated all the materials to Hebrew because they were only uh, in English. And also because now we can actually have a very much richer um, research when we think about history because the same event was documented probably also in uh, Israeli newsreels and also in American newsreels. And you can see actually the differences. So we only just started to catalog. So we only have a very few 
of the items already on the website, but you can see only from the, um, the years, you know, 1934, 1946, um, this item we actually didn't have and it's in the process of being uh, subtitles both to Hebrew and in English. But Albert Einstein um, uh, gave a, a, a talk um, at the US Palestine campaign dinner in New York City, which is just amazing that we could have it also host, hosted on a website and provide access to it to the general public. Um, um, this is a, 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 uh, an example for a home movie collection of a uh, Gutman family, the Louis Gutman. If you Google it, you actually find a Wikipedia entry in English for this person. He was a professor both in the US and in Israel. Um, he was a very famous one, an important one for, um, how do you say it, um, for statistics and uh, psychology. And they just shot, you know, they're every day here in uh, Israel and also abroad. Um, we also have the, the couple uh, wedding ceremony in 1943. Uh, um, in the first glimpse, it's also silent because home movies are uh, usually silent. In the first glance, it seems like, uh, I don't know, a very ordinary, uh, um, you know, documentation of a happy day in a, in a couple uh, life. But what we actually learned from talking with uh, the couple's daughter that you saw beforehand that the, 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 the lady was uh, with, a, uh, with a, a blue dress and not with a white dress. And what we, she actually told us that back then they were, uh, they didn't, they wasn't, they weren't sure about who is, uh, what's happening with their family in Europe. So she wasn't able um, to um, get, um, to go to the wedding with white dress. It was just too hard for her and for the family to think about, you know, this day, uh, without thinking about their relatives, that they are, they are not sure what is uh, their um, ha happened to them. Um, so home movies tell us much more sometimes, even when they are silent, they tell us things that maybe uh, newsreels and uh, institutional records wouldn't ever tell us. And of course we can um, see even what people uh, were used to eat during their uh, Jewish uh, weddings back then and uh, dressing uh, how it looked like. And it's very interesting documentation overall. So um, I really urge you to, to take a look. Um, wow, th there is so much more that I want to show you, but I would uh, try to end it uh, fairly soon so you would be able to ask questions. This is, for instance, a collection of uh, Jean Stallman, who was here, the, the collection, it's a fairly um, small collection that was here at the archive that nobody really put uh, a lot of attention to it. Jim Stallman, I think it's the man uh, in the right, was a... Um, a eye doctor here in Jerusalem, and he, uh, before he passed away, he gave his collection many years ago to the archive. When we started our digitization project, like, like what we uh, happened to us so many times, we discovered so many things that we didn't know we have at the archive. For instance, Albert Einstein. <laughs> Um, as you can see, again, it's a silent documentation and not a lot is happening, but I think everybody can feel this really um, um, private, intimate feel that you have uh, and not usually have when you see other kind of documentation. You see that they are kind of humble and not sure what to do with themselves. And actually uh, you can see there is a double exposure. It's something in the camera itself. The lady in the right is uh, Ada Zamir, who actually her work inspired a uh, Yonat, I forgot a word, but she just recently won the Nobel Prize um, uh, in the area of biology and genetics. Um, so the lady on the right was one of the people who inspired um, 
inspired it. Um, yeah, and, and there are just, oh, just uh, one more collection is the Histadrut, the labor, um, uh, the labor, how do you say it? Um, general mean? organization of workers in Israel. They made many, many films along the, the years um, about cities like Dimona in the 62, um, and also about uh, labor and uh, work and, um, or, and uh, cooperatives. Um, so lots and lots of what to, to do here uh, and look through. Very last collection that I will demonstrate is actually one that I really like. It's from um, Gwit Kedman. Also Google her name. She's a very interesting woman and uh, she has a very interesting life. She already passed away. And she came, she was some kind of um, anthropologist, um, not an institutional anthropologist. I think she was, you know, from, from herself kind of uh, avid for the thing and for dances, for folklore dances. And when she, uh, and she uh, documented, documented by herself um, uh, different kind of uh, groups from Israel, their original dances. If you're not familiar with the sound, it's because it's Yemen, it's Yemenite language. And think about it, it's Yemenite people who just came to Israel. And when you know about, you know about the Israeli melting point, and it's, I think, the only documentation that one have about the uh, original um, uh, dances and uh, singing from the period. Um, she, already, she also documented the uh, Chabanim and Mount Atlas Moroccan Libyan Desert Jews, also Druze. We didn't have the, uh, the old element, but some of it, Kuchin, which is Jews from a, a specific um, area in uh, India. Um, yeah, and I want just to go back uh, shortly to what I started with, although I wanted to... Uh, close with it. So here we have the VOD and again we have uh, films about uh, every topic that one can think of. Um, this is a very famous film that wasn't available I think for many years from 1963 and if we talk today about Holocaust there weren't many feature-length films, fictional films uh, that uh, touch the subject. And I think this is one of the first one that actually touched the subjects from 1963. Um, but it's side by side with uh, Amos Gitai, if you're familiar, a very active director that uh, works today. Um, um, and we also have another interesting um, section, which is, um, the, the collections here, we just started to have a platform now, a page that is dedicated to different kind of, um, of um, we actually invite uh, cultural uh, personas and uh, directors and people from uh, the art world to take one uh, genre or one director or one actor, whatever they are, are interested in, uh, and work and write about them, uh, you know, um, a like like a, like an article just with the moving images. For instance, this is about Amos Gutman, um, who passed away. He was a very interesting and special director in the Israeli cinema world because he was one of the first, basically, to touch upon. Um, homosexual relationship and put it, you know, on the screen. Um, what we were really now are um, used to was very um, breaking through at those days. So we invited people, Amir Kaminer is an Israeli newspaper uh, and, a, and a cinema critic who wrote a, you know, not so long um, paragraph on the, the subject. Here it's about Amos Gutman. And then he decided he picked 
a few um, scenes to demonstrate the, the, the most Gutmann's life and work and work also about each and every segment, something that is, you know, giving, shedding, give more light about the topic. So also we invited, um, um, if you're familiar with um, Asi Dayan, his son, Lior Dayan, to talk about, to write about his father's work. He was a very uh, important director in Israeli uh, cinema along the years. And you can also watch the films or segments of the films and read about um, Asi Dayan. Okay, and I'm... Um, just re remember that I forgot <laughs> the last thing that is really important to show you specific guys because you are from the academia, so it will talk really to you uh, more than maybe to other people. If you see, I, walk, I uh, went to the um, um, here and, and uh, we have different kind of uh, uh, pages, and one is the archive catalog. What we are, uh, what I show you until now was um, our website, which contains uh, films that are available to watch um, instantly. You know, uh, most of them are for free. The historical view is for free completely. The artistic view, the cinema VOD, some of them, uh, some of the films are for free, and some of them are for a uh, small fee. And this is actually the catalog, which contains all the films that we have here at the archive, but not necessarily are uh, not necessarily being digitized until now. It not necessarily are being accessible to watch, but sometimes for research is uh, researchers is very important to be able to also look through a catalog. And uh, of course, if you are in Israel, you can. Um, set an appointment and come to watch the films here at the archive if they are not available online. If you are abroad, it's a little bit more challenging because, because of copyrights. But if you have a specific film that you are interested in and, and you have a research on this topic and needs uh, access, you can uh, try and email me. Maybe we will be able to sort something out. Okay, so um, feel free to email. In worst case, I won't be able to help you. Basically, it works like uh, other kind of um, or search engines. I will just demonstrate really, really shortly. Um, if we are looking, for, for instance, to in the world um, Israel, okay, in, I, I looked for full movies and I do search. I click on search. You can see on the right, I have all the results, 510 results that looked through Israel in all our fields in the film entries, every um, uh, square here is basically a, an entry in our catalog. You can search in all fields, but you can also search only, for instance, in the title. Um, and you can see different titles here. You can also uh, um, order them by uh, year, new to old, for instance, and then you have the newest one, the 2017, in the entry, if you click on more info, if we had info in our um, catalog, we would share it with you. Some of them have more um, details and some of them less. You can also um, have a more uh, filters with uh, genre, for instance, if I only look for animation. So I only have three results and etc. You can also drill it down to actors and directors according to length and years. If you come across in the year uh, zero, it means that we didn't know the year it was made. So um, this was zero is standing for. Another kind of search in the catalog, as you saw in the historical view, we actually logged and tagged a very specific items inside the films. So full movies would give you search in all the entries that we have in the, in the archive, but history items would give you a search only in the specific segments that we tagged. Um, and this will be also be available on a website. So if I, for instance, look for uh, Canada, I see I have uh, 63 results. 
Um, you see here we have a, a different picture. It means that the, uh, this segment is available on a website and you can basically go and watch it online on the website. Uh, and again, more details, you can have it uh, Canada and Academy. Okay, here it actually found Canada because um, it's Canada Hall in the Hebrew University Academy. Um, but as you can see, it gives you much more, um, um, it, it's a tool for researchers. If you log in, you can also um, 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 uh, save your, um, save uh, interesting entries to a personal list. So you can, br you can browse it also later on. Okay. I, it took a, a, a much uh, longer than I expected, but I'm now done. <laughs> Hila, we could listen to you and watch you walk us through this incredible, incredible resource for a lot longer. And I know I'm speaking for everyone in the audience just by looking at the comments that have been coming in. I cannot tell you how thankful we are for what you have done and for what you're doing in this moment. Uh, with your explanation. So if you can still bear with us for a few of more course, minutes, maybe I will pleasure. just share a few of the questions that came in. And I yeah. do want to apologize in advance to ev everyone whose questions we may not be getting to. After the event, I will be sharing the, uh, the chat with Hila, and then maybe that will also give uh, you, Hila, yeah. and us an opportunity to uh, uh, to mediate and, and connect people's yeah. questions with you directly. But there are a number of questions that... Yeah, um, I, I, yeah just let, let me say, I, it's really important for us to get feedback from people all around the world. We really, it's a labor of love and we do it in order to people, um, you know, to, co to connect with these materials. So feel free to email me. In the beginning of the chat, I gave you some links. There is also a, a, a future newsletter in English that we would like um, to start with, and also my personal email. So really feel free to contact me with every question. I would, would try my best to, to answer everybody's questions. But yeah, uh, to you, um, pick, pick the, the questions that you Great. would be... Yeah. Here are some uh, very quick pointed questions at the very beginning uh, regarding access to the catalog and the website. So uh, do people, do users have to open an account? It seems that uh, to access some material, you need a password, you need to log in. And I've received a number of questions about that. So if you could please uh, speak to that briefly. And there is, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, please go ahead. Yeah, so for uh, everything that is, all the materials that are for free, you don't need to log in. You can just browse, no need in logging in in any kind of uh, way. For the films that you need to pay uh, that are in a, in a small fee, we have you we have to, uh, you guys log in in order, uh, you know, to afterwards be able to um, provide the, uh, the fee to the right holders. Uh, in the catalog, you don't have to log in. Uh, the only reason to log in, if you want to save you know, the entries in a personal page in the catalog, otherwise you don't have to. Um, I was asked before about access uh, worldwide. So I can say um, that 80% of the films are open to everybody, no matter wherever you are in the world. Um, some of the films, more in the uh, VOD platforms, are restricted only to Israel because of right holders that ask us to, um, to limit the access. There is no other um, uh, reason to it. Um, in this case, if you are going to be in any other place than Israel, no matter if it's Europe or the US or Africa, you are not going to get access and it will show you, you know, a... a, a, a declaration about it. But uh, most of the films will really try hard to, to that will, they will be uh, free and also available from all over the world. Thank you, Hila. Uh, then we have a bunch of questions from Mark. Uh, thank you, Mark, for sharing them. I'm going to package them together and ask about four of them in one go, and then you can take them, in, take them apart or answer them uh, as you like, Hila. 
So uh, two technical questions about uh, subtitles. Is there a project, an ongoing project or plan to add more English subtitles to those films that currently don't have any? And mm -hmm. the films or footage that was originally without English subtitles, is it possible to watch them in the original without the subtitles? So if you added subtitles to them, can the user still go back and watch the original? Is it possible to uh, have donors support the digitization of specific films that, are, that have not yet been digitalized uh, in, the, in the collection? And there's also a question, I think it's also from Mark, but I may be mistaken. How can somebody donate uh, films to the archive? Okay, great questions. So uh, for the subtitles issue, we really work hard and were fortunate to receive a, a, a dedicated uh, donations to be able to provide subtitles to many of the films, to almost, um, almost uh, all of them, but it's in prog progress. So maybe there is a film that is not, it, it is without subtitles today. Uh, you can contact me or just, you know, um, refresh and look after a few weeks, maybe it will gain subtitles by then. Uh, it's a work in progress. So this is, uh, uh, and if you want to watch it, Without English subtitles, we want to watch it with Hebrew subtitles. You can, you can uh, look, I would just share my screen really briefly to show you that uh, if you go, it's kind of, um, um, for instance, um, if you go to the film itself, um, There is a button on the right that you can basically change the, the it's not the language. The language is, is the same language. We didn't dub any of the material. We only translated it. But if you go here to the right, you can, up, sorry, you can pick um, captions, not in English, but rather in Hebrew. We actually did it in person, in, a, in purpose that uh, uh, if you are in the English, uh, if you uh, browse the website in the English platform, the subtitles would be um, instantly shown to you in English. And if you're in the Hebrew platform, it will show to you in Hebrew, but you can change it also by yourself. So this is about the subtitles. Um, to donate money to uh, digitize films. Oh, I think well, fi donate film. Or I'm oh, sorry. donate films. Yeah, of course. Okay, for the for the last questions about donation films, we are constantly uh, accepting films to the archive. Uh, we'd be happy, and you and we have also collections from uh, families and people and cinema. Uh, um, uh, from people around the world. We, uh, we have home movies also from uh, uh, Jewish families from all around the world and not just personal movies. So uh, yeah, feel free to contact me and we'll walk through how we, uh, it's of course uh, free of charge if it's a deal with Israel or Jewish uh, um, topics. It's of course free of charge to deposit them at the archive. In terms of digitization and uh, provide access to them is of course also um, it's a, a question of the right holders. If, if you are interested in it, we can also uh, work on it. So happily, please, yeah. Thank you very much, Hila. And uh, we have a question from Amit, who is joining us from India. So I feel particularly uh, obliged and very, very happy, of course, to share the question with you and with the audience. So here's the question. For the silent films, shorts and documentaries or home movies without sound, so those that are silent, was there any documentation readily available for the frame rate? If not, mm -hmm. how was the decision for frame rate considered beyond the feel of the footage? To okay, the so question. I would just say, say shortly for people who are not from the cinema world, uh, basically uh, in film we have 24 frames 
a second, 24 still frames in a second of a film. And what was the question about, it's about the silent film that the frame rate uh, was different. They didn't shot 24 frames for a second, but uh, rather 18 or a different kind of uh, frame rate. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure actually the, the, uh, the best people to answer it is our uh, technicians, the scanning technicians. So uh, if you will uh, send it to me personally, I would be happy to uh, um, forward the question to them as well. That's great. And uh, Hila, just one uh, comment. A number of uh, URI in particular would like to access already the newsletter and the Google sheet that you shared but the sheet seems to be restricted. So maybe we can just follow up uh, later to, uh, to see how, uh, the, I can't emphasize how interested our guests and viewers are in everything you have said and shared with us. <laughs> so I know Hila that we are going to be getting more and more requests uh, of this nature. And let me just also use this opportunity to tell them and repeat to everyone, please, please email Hila directly or email us. We are also very happy to share and connect. Uh, that's, of course, part of, uh, part of our mandate. So, um, so that's great. Um, Hila, um, thank you so much. Uh, I asked for your time uh, this evening uh, for an hour, and we have already uh, exceeded that. And of course, it's a snowy Jerusalem evening and you have to get home on the slippery roads and streets of Jerusalem. So we hope that uh, you can do so safely. And, uh, and really just thank you ever so much uh, for, for being with us. Before I would let you go and before I would uh, say goodbye to uh, our audience, uh, I would like to bring to everyone's attention that since you are, if you are still interested in film, uh, later on today, please note that in uh, partnership with the Murray Gallinson San Diego Israel Initiative, we are inviting you to a special event which is going to be uh, offered and brought to your screens from San Diego by the uh, MGS DII. It's a special encounter with the filmmaker and um, and a special guest star, a star uh, Amos Tamam and. Uh, and uh, Ronit Weiss Berkowitz, uh, who are responsible for, of course, this Netflix uh, Israeli hit show, The Girl from Oslo. Uh, the details are on the screen that you can see. If you are interested in registering for the event through us, please shoot an email to the Israeli Institute. And um, we have uh, a partnership with the, uh, with the initiative and we'll be able to register you for the event that is going to start the conversation that is going to start um, very shortly. Um, with that said, uh, I would like to bring this absolutely fascinating exchange uh, uh, to, uh, to a closure. I read about the, um, and I, I had known and I had heard about the, uh, the initiative that Hila shared this tremendous information with us about. Uh, for a number of years, I've been taking our students from Concordia University to Israel, to Jerusalem. And every time, of course, I try to share Israeli artistic and historical documentaries with them and then use the actual opportunity of being in the field and seeing what particular parts of the country and the city looked like um, earlier on uh, and, and use the documentaries that way. But what uh, what you made possible, Hila, you and your colleagues, is just going to make, I know, my uh, Israeli field course, but also the Israeli politics courses that I'm teaching in the classrooms um, in Montreal, so much richer. And uh, Olivier, one of our able research assistants, is, is here in the audience today, and he knows already that he's going to be put to hard work working with this catalog. So really, there is just no end uh, to, uh, to the fantastic educational enrichment that uh, you are making possible. So um, for that and so much more as a pedagogue, I call um, Hakavod, uh, I really, um, I hats off and thank you ever so much. And yeah. not to mention the, the charming personable presentation that, um, that just added um, really to the enjoyment. So thank you, Hila. We, uh, My pleasure. We look forward to, uh, um, to ongoing collaboration and partnership with you and with the Cinematheque, with the Archive over the next, uh, next several years and the future. And as I promised, we'll be very happy to make connections between you and any member of the audience 
who would like to get in touch with you about this project. Yeah, thank you all guys for uh, staying up. <laughs> it's not so late yet for us, but yes, yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Good night, Hila. Good Bye. night, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.